Hey guys, Abner Miranda here. Today I wanted to give you guys a quick training tip on when you're working on movement drills, which really ought to be a big part of your training. Um, your training ought to be based on moving, stopping, stabilizing, finding your shot, deciding if you're going to shoot or move again, and then taking off and moving. These things are set roughly 11 to 12 yards from one another. Uh, and I wanted, the reason I did that is I wanted to have I wanted to have a setup that would force me to move and not just do a quick little jaunt from point A to point B and back. Uh, those are time drills. Uh, I wanted something that really required me to move with real focus because if you're only moving five or six yards, by the time you take off running, your run is now over. But when you're dealing with this expanse or greater, and I would highly suggest that you go greater, if you're dealing with a large expanse, you can actually get into a proper run. The reason that this is not greater is this camera is set at 170 degrees of aspect ratio. And if I get any wider on these things, it just, the video gets ridiculous. I don't want you guys seeing this weird fisheye effect, which you kind of already have going. But I wanted to give you the bigger picture. This drill not only works with rifle, like we're going to do today, it also works really well with handgun. You're able to get into a full-on run. You're able to traverse one, two, three, four. I would suggest that you not go more than four cycles. And the reason for that is once you're about four cycles into this, and it should be about two to three shots per position. Once you're about four cycles into this, your heart rate is really, really high. And now you run the risk of falling. And the last thing you want to do is take a really bad spill on the range. Uh, from the standpoint of hurting yourself with a firearm, that's ugly. But just at a more simple level, you don't want to hurt yourself on the range and then tomorrow in the real world, as it were, when trouble comes looking for you, you hurt yourself here and you can't defend yourself there. So let's have a look. And by the way, guys, because you know that I'm really big on the concealment of a firearm, that also applies to your, uh, your SBR or your AR-15 pistol if this were a shockwave. This is actually a proper SBR. When you are, if for whatever reason the fight has actually gotten to the point where you actually can get an SBR out or an AR-15 pistol. One of the things that you really should remember is that you can stick 30 rounders easily into the front pockets or back pockets of your blue jeans. But as you guys know, I can seal my mags in my back pockets because they're sewn up the middle. But you can easily stick two mags on one side and two mags on the other. Uh, yeah, you do run the risk of fracturing your phone, so keep that in mind. But you know what? This is the least of your worries if bullets are flying. But what I'm getting at, guys, is you can have a lot of ammo up front here. You can have 120 rounds in your pockets right here, plus another 30 in the rifle. So think about that. You know, I've come to the conclusion there's no attractive way to do that. Uh, at least not at my age. Uh, you will find inconsistencies in your movement, in your weapons handling, when you set up a drill that requires more physical output from you than you're accustomed to. Uh, that's what I've got for you guys today. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. I'll answer them. As always, God bless you all. Thank you for watching. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one.